everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Ulu Bele Tutube and I talk about anything and everything to do with actuarial science. So because I've gotten quite a few questions about what life after the actuarial science degree looks like, basically what jobs you can do, what careers, you, what career paths you can take and what those what your duties in each, in each different role look like. I decided to put together a sort of career series where I get um, myself and other people who've graduated with a material science degree and we basically talk about what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So together we're going to try and answer the question, what does an actuary actually do? working for a consultancy that mainly focuses on the health industry. So because I work in consulting, uh, my tasks do tend to vary um, every month, but there are certain things that I'm required to do um, on a monthly basis. One of those things is calculating IV and R reserves. So if you're unfamiliar with the term IBNRs, this is basically the incurred but not reported claims. What happens here is say in January you go and visit a dentist, but then you only report that claim in say March. So as long as it's still within the time that the medical aid um, said they're willing to pay for the claim, that claim is still valid and the medical aid has to have held enough money to be able to pay for those claims as they arise. So what I basically do is calculate um, for, for each month how much that medical aid scheme um, needs to hold for additional claims that they just, don't, they just don't know about yet that could possibly arise so that when those claims do arise, they're able to meet those claims. Another thing I do on a month-to-month -month basis is to basically put together um, reports that we send out to our medical aid scheme clients that um, basically detail the most crucial financial, demographic, and claims information that may be relevant to that scheme. So one of the interesting things about this, these reports is that we come up with a year-end projection of what we feel the scheme's financial position will be. So having to think of how different months, um, how claims vary within different months, um, impact of COVID and how they will affect the claims. So for example, if there's going to be another lockdown, we're going to see more people afraid to go visit hospitals, which could result in fewer claims. Or if the vaccine comes out, we could expect um, higher claims because we'll have to cover um, the costs of people obtaining the vaccine. So basically considering all these different things and coming up with an assumption of what we think um, the financial position of the scheme will be at the end of the year. So another thing that I'm required to do, so this is not on a month-to-month -month basis, but more so towards the end of the year when the medical aid schemes are coming up with the new um, contribution levels. So one of the things um, I have to do is basically assist in the preparation of that scheme's budget for the next year, basically trying to figure out what we assume tariff increases will be, what we assume claims um, next year would look like, and basically come up with contributions, um, basically set the contribution rates that we're going to be charging um, the medical scheme members um, the, for the next coming year. Things we need to consider are things like the changes in membership. Are members going to buy down to cheaper options um, due to affordability? Are more people going to hold on to their medical aid um, because they're afraid of COVID? Um, we also have to consider how claims will be affected. Are we expecting a third wave um, for COVID? During that time, what will happen? What are we expecting the admissions to look like? Um, what are we expecting um, claims to look like? How are we expecting it to affect um, our financial position? And basically considering all these aspects and so much more and then putting it all together and coming up with a budget for the, for the upcoming year and setting the contributions that medical, medical aid scheme members are going to pay. 
So one of the really cool ad hoc tasks per se that I've been able to get involved in was basically doing an analysis to identify some possible amalgamation uh, partners for medical aid schemes. So what an amalgamation is, is basically when two medical aid schemes come together, um, this can be in the form of a bigger medical scheme absorbing the smaller medical scheme. So we saw that last year with BestMed and Gemma's. Or we can see two medical schemes coming together to form a new medical scheme altogether, um, like what we saw with Resolution Med and Spectrum Med, um, where they came together and formed Health Squared. So, why did I choose to be an actual analyst um, working in the health industry? Um, in consulting. Um, honestly, when I started my actual degree, I always thought I'd get into investments. And then, um, I don't know, when I did um, life contingencies, I was like, wait, this is, this is interesting. Um, I was actually quite I was actually quite intrigued by it and then um, moving on to uh, CA1, actual risk management and then um, actually seeing a glimpse of health insurance as well. Um, I, that's when I kind of started looking more towards like life insurance and health. So those were like the two that I, I figured I would really want to get into. With regards to consulting, I've always known I want to work in consulting. I feel like consulting is such an amazing opportunity to learn so many things in such a short space of time um, and to be involved in so many different projects. And just for your day not to ever be boring or the same, um, I feel like it's it's great for like a more exciting um, career. So that's the reason I chose um, my current career path. <music> to be honest, um, if. I think of the syllabus, um, looking at basically the, the core and um, technical subjects. There aren't a lot of there aren't a lot of um, courses that really do prepare you for the health industry. I feel like the first time I really got a taste of what the health industry looks like was from CA1, so outside service management was a course that did um, prepare me for the role. Um, however, looking at um, the calculating IBNRs and calculating reserves using one of triangles that does come up in 8214. So I feel like that course was also helpful in preparing me for, the, for my current role. So that brings us to the end of the first video on my series on careers. I hope it was informative and I hope it will help you guys make uh, much more informed decisions. Um, so if you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, uh, do comment um, down below and if you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe and do share, your do share my channel with other people who will be interested in this kind of information. Um, so before I end this video, I'm going to be having a video with a recruitment specialist, um, basically giving some interview tips and how to apply for jobs and certain things that you should consider when um, doing your job hand search. So if there's anything that you'd want to know um, about basically getting a job, interviews, all that kind of stuff, do comment down below so I know what questions that you want me to ask them. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video.